Hey guys, I'm Ben from Authentech, and those shots are kind of like magic. It's a floating, flying, hovering, 360 degree camera that's gotten me really excited about shooting some fun, new, fresh content for my YouTube videos and socials like Instagram. Make sure you're following me there. So no, this video is not sponsored. They just sent me the products. I'm honestly just excited and pumped about this little camera and more specifically what these little accessories can do to change the game from my shooting style, cinematography, and more. So here's the main idea. I already reviewed the Insta360 ONE X when it first came out, but since then I've been able to play with it and test it out a lot more. And something has really changed the game for me are these two little accessories. So here's the best way I can put it. If I buy a GoPro and pick up a few extra accessories, my shots might go from here up to here. It doesn't change it that much. But when I get these two accessories matched up with this camera, it's almost like it's unlocking the full potential that it has, taking my shots from here all the way up to here. First, let me show you what these two accessories are that I'm even talking about. All the links will be down below. This first one is called the Drifter, and it's basically like a dart that you click your camera right in. It's made of really nice materials, good weight balance, soft touch rubber plastic, Two of the fins are soft and bendy, while the other two have some sort of metal plates inside. It's very rigid and sturdy, so that when the camera's clicked in, both your lenses are protected. As they say, this allows your camera to take flight and shoot airborne slow motion footage, capturing every angle at once. So here's just a few examples of almost impossible shots from any other camera rig, but since this camera is shooting in 360 degrees with crazy smooth stabilization, we can change the angle of the camera mid-flight after the fact, keeping your subject always in frame. The shots it produces are sort of awe-inspiring, and you'll have a lot of people asking you, how the heck did you capture that? It's super cool, very awesome, and if you think about it, we could never do this with any other camera, like a GoPro or a cell phone, because chucking it mid-air, it'd be spinning around like crazy. It's only possible because it's recording in all directions, and it's coupled with that electronic image stabilization that's super smooth. The other game-changing accessory seems a lot less simple on the outside, but actually has become a new favorite of mine in the gear bag. They call it the extended selfie stick. It's basically a selfie pole with a quarter inch tripod mount on both ends. However, most selfie sticks out there usually max out length around 30 to 50 inches. That's around two and a half to four feet long. This one, however, reaches all the way out to 118 inches. That's three meters or almost 10 feet. It's made of carbon fiber, super lightweight at only eight ounces, and compacts down to just 23 inches. So we could easily carry it around, maybe even fit it in a book bag. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have the twist to lock each section, though this would be nice to see in a future model. Instead, it's sort of like those paper yo-yos where each section of the pole extends fully out and then squeezes the tension and sticks into place. I sort of like that I can flick it outwards and fully extend in seconds, and same with compacting down. It's super quick and easy. We screw the camera onto the end and that's it. No need for a bubble level head or anything as the horizon should always be level and stabilization is hyper smooth. Just watch some of these shots as I wildly swing the camera all around, down 10 feet, up 10 feet, wide sweeping shots. The use cases and creative ideas are almost endless and the results are just impeccable in my opinion. Again, you'll get lots of people asking, how did you get that shot? And you can just smirk and tell them it was magic. Sometimes it looks like a micro drone is racing around. Now yes, one thing I found when using the camera indoors or low light situations, sometimes the stabilization causes a little bit of shutter blur, but it's not terrible and still produces usable footage. Yes, they offer a shorter lockable selfie stick, still invisible, which is very sweet too, and it's perfect for certain situations. Its size goes all the way down. Whoops. Its size goes all the way down to just 11 inches, but then out to 47 inches. And it's currently only 15 bucks on Amazon, so it's probably worth the pickup. But again, this crazy long, lightweight selfie stick can be swung fast and wide into almost any nook and cranny. The whole pole is almost fully invisible, even when looking backwards towards the camera operator. It's almost like having a portable camera crane wherever you go. 
even inside a car, which those vehicle jibs cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So the world's your oyster, and here's just a few of the fun and helpful use cases I thought that this camera setup could change the game. Now, of course, the first and obvious is filmmaking. This is where I lie. capture stunning, high-flying aerial-like shots with the flick of your wrist, but then also super low, down, fast, sweeping dynamic shots as well. Well, it's basically wide versatility. I can also imagine this being an awesome tool for vloggers. Imagine a Casey or others raising the game for fresh and new perspectives. Point the camera back at yourself for a walking, talking headshots, but then swing the camera perspective anywhere around at the landscape and subjects of which you want to show your audience. How about the versatility of different industries and businesses like property inspections? This was a funny and small example, but I was able to fast and easy stick this camera right up into a light post, look all around with good clarity and detail, and then swing out wide. Think about roof or building or bridge inspections. Imagine strapping the camera to a drone. Oh, just joking, I actually did that. Carrying the extended selfie stick with camera from my Phantom 4 was lightweight and easy and produced some flying, floating mid-air 360 shots. Very cool and fresh perspective. Speaking of drones, as a quick experiment, I strapped my old Insta360 to Danny's FPV racing drone. He took flight and raced around and the results were crazy. The stabilization and perspective is out of this world, and mark my words, this is just the beginning of 360 cameras on drones. Another small but useful idea, use this little guy as a dash cam. It could record and cover literally every possible angle in your vehicle, and that way you're always protected for those just-in-case moments. If I was an Uber driver, I would totally use this thing. Also, just imagine real estate tours and marketing videos. I used to do that full time and I would definitely use this whole rig setup for shooting high end real estate content. Okay, so how does all the pricing lay out and compare versus GoPro? Well, stay tuned and subscribe as I'm in the works of creating a side by side comparison video. The One X and GoPro 7 are the exact same price, currently $399. Some people might ask, well, what about the GoPro Fusion? Well, I never actually had one to test hands on, but I've watched a lot of reviews and the summary is that the Insta360 is much easier to use. Plus the price point, the Fusion is almost double the price at 599 and it's lower resolution 5.2K video versus 5.7K on the One X. And I think it has the old stabilization, not that new hyper smooth like the Hero 7 has. What about versus the Osmo Pocket? Well, yes, I think you'd get much sharper quality video on the Osmo, of course, which is important in certain scenarios, but definitely not always. And of course, you're not recording spherically like this one, so they each have their own place, each different uses. Another funny thing to mention regarding quality, I find it pretty hilarious when I make a big deal, let's say a camera can record 4K 60 FPS, and then there's people out there who say, well, who cares about 4K? Everyone's watching 1080p, which, Sure, that's sort of true, but then let me tell you that this camera exports 16x9 video at 1080p. Well, then there will be people who just say that resolution isn't good enough. The moral of the story is you can't please them all. And a few key takeaways. A, the 1080p footage on here looks pretty dang good for cropping in that close. B, there are a lot of people out there who are not obsessed with high resolution and 1080p is more than sufficient. But then again, of course, higher resolution the better for myself. I post all my videos in 4K on YouTube. Hopefully down the road, we could see an Insta360 model that maybe has 12K resolution total, five or 6K sensor on each side. So thus, when we crop in, maybe we're exporting a 4K res video file. That's the dream and hopefully we'll see it down the road. Now, I have two big wishlist items for Insta360. 
A, their new mobile app is hands down awesome and powerful. Let me show you a quick example of how I edit a clip to give you an idea of workflow and processing time. Okay, so here's the basic workflow. I've just copied the files over from my One X. You can do it wirelessly over Wi-Fi or with the cable. It saves battery and goes a little bit faster. And come on in, here's the clips that I copied over. This is a 32 second example clip. What's nice is you can do nine by 16 aspect ratio, good for the social media or 16 by nine, let's go with this one since it's going on YouTube. There's a few ways of tracking like pivot points and smart tracking. The one I like the best is viewfinder. So it's kind of like a virtual viewfinder. As you maneuver your phone to explore the scene, you'll determine which fixed frame footage is extracted from that original 360 video. So what you see is what you record. Also, if you're feeling a little dizzy, you can use your finger to swipe around. Okay, so that clip was about 32 seconds. It takes about 32 seconds to record that. And then we go to save and export right to the album. Let's start a little timer to see how long a 32 second clip takes. All right, and boom, we switch it over to our albums and there's our recorded virtual viewfinder clip. Super sweet, fast and easy. Then we transfer it over to File and Cut and we're good to go. So, as you can see, it's actually not that bad and has some really nice features baked right in. However, as a full-time content producer like myself, if I shoot 20 or 50 clips in a day, I really, really need fast and efficient desktop software to process those files even faster. Insta360 has some desktop apps, but for this camera specifically, it's right now super basic and can't do half the things that the mobile app can do. The key feature for any professional filmmaker out there, I would really like to see more development for a more powerful Mac software, or even better, a Final Cut plugin with those exact same mobile app features. This way I could zip through clips 100 times faster on my iMac over my phone. If you guys want to see how I currently edit some of these 360 files in Final Cut, it's currently a lengthier process, but let me know down in the comments and I can make a whole video in itself. Another possible downfall is audio. GoPro and other cameras allow you to record high quality, crisp recording with add-on modules labs or shotgun mics, USB adapters. It's not yet possible here. And this is an audio test. Audio test one, two, three, four. If you need professional audio, well then of course you're gonna need a separate recorder device. And another wishlist idea, I would love to see an option in the settings to auto back up photos and or video wirelessly to my phone. Leave it as a toggle and off by default as I know it'll suck down the battery life, but it would be very helpful to have as I'm out in the field shooting a couple of hours, capturing all these clips, and then later jumping on my phone and those files are automatically copied right over so then I can edit on the go. Boom, that would be awesome. No more needing to select clips, copy them over, and then waiting times. This would all be done for me. So for my conclusion, this new camera and setup of the Insta360 ONE X with the invisible extra long selfie stick and that flying drifter dart, it will bring a fresh and new perspective to a lot of my content creation opening up a world of new impossible angles. I'll give you all the product links down in the description. And if you wanna see more camera videos like this in the future, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, let's live authentic.